The idea of the sermon recap section or the charge is that we become mighty and become strong with the word. It's not just an idea to showcase your excellency and the brilliancy of your speech, but also a time for you to become strong and competent with the word. We want to raise people that understand the word, that interact with the word, and can dispense the word. There's one thing to understand the word, there's another thing to dispense the word. And we're in a time and a season where God is raising dispensers of the word. That means when somebody meets you, they contact the word. When somebody meets you, they hear the word because you understand the word and you can dispense the word. So we'll do that for, you know, the time being until God tells us to stop. We'll have one of the pastors or one of the leaders come take us on a brief charge, exhortation on, you know, a few topics. Then another taught us on how to wait on the Lord last week, um, bro, Ben, or two weeks ago, or last week, last week, right? Last week, bro, Ben also did a very mighty exposition on the last sermon we did. All right? So quickly, I'll be teaching you on my identity as a believer today. All right? See, I told you the last time, I, two weeks ago, I told you that there are many of us that are victims of demonic programming. And the demonic programming was principally programmed in our mind. Principally programmed where? I can't hear you. In our mind. They are principally programmed in our mind. And they were programmed by two factors. One, ignorance. Secondly, and I said in ignorance, there are two dimensions of ignorance. I said there's an ignorance that comes because you don't know. Because you don't what? I can't hear you louder. Repeat after me. Because you don't what? No. That's, that's the generic definition of ignorance. Because you don't know. But there's another la layer of ignorance that comes because you have been taught a lie. And you either have been taught a lie deliberately or unknowingly, that many of us are victims of a lie. For example, some of you, your mother told you that if you, if you pass under a cloth, under a rope with a cloth, there is a cost. So, I know a brother that told me that anytime he's about to pass under a rope, you know what rope is earlier? How many of you know what the, what do they call it in English? A proper word for it. A sp spraying cloth rope. What do they call it? A proper word for it? Earlier, you know, some of you, some of us who are from Clothesline, perfect. Mm, hallelujah, that's that you know English. All right, I think that's a good one. So the brother said anytime he wants to pass under the clothesline, he will remember that his mom told him, don't pass there because there's a demonic implication to it. So there are many of us that are victims of programming by either error or by ignorance. We are victims of programming by either what? Error or what? Ignorance. And so many of us, even as believers, are still under that bondage of that error. Because even though we are born again, we are a new creature, we didn't enter and approach God without undoing those errors. We didn't undo them. So there are many erroneous principles and patterns. There are many demonic programs that you have in your mind because of the lie that you have been taught. Or because of your ignorance of your mind. And I told you, we saw in, in scripture, in 2 Corinthians 11, I think that was the first scripture we read. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3, the Bible says that don't be deceived. He said, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent, uh, serpent beguiled if through his subtlety you, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. He said, I fear. It was Paul speaking. He said, I fear that by any means you don't become like Eve that was beguiled from the simplicity that is in the gospel of Christ. I fear. You know why Paul is saying I fear? Because Paul has seen a lot of Christians that they were, they've been beguiled from the simplicity of the gospel. They've been deceived. They've been taught a lie. Do you know the Bible says, Paul was talking to the Galatian church. He said, who has bewitched you, the Galatian church? He said, you have started in the spirits. Now you are being perfected in the flesh. So there are many times where we start in the spirit, we become perfected in the flesh because at, some, at a point in our journey, in, in our work with God, we, we encounter the lie. There are many things that we do today that are lies, but we don't know honestly and sincerely we don't know. And a lot of us are victims of those lies. We honestly don't know. We don't know, but we are victims of those lies. But you see, the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth we what? I can't hear you. Set it free. So the reason why a lot of us are under many kind of bondage, different kind of bondage because of the absence of the truth. Because the moment the truth comes, deliverance comes. 
I told you last Sunday, the Bible says in Isaiah 54 that we read, that the way you are created, God said, I created the blacksmith that blew the coal. I created even the blower and the destroyer. He said, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And I told you that God has given you a, a the way God crafted you, he crafted you in such a way by there's no weapon design that can prosper. And I know that even though this is scripture, you, you are remembering somewhere in your heart, the last movie you watch. Hallelujah. Are we together? The last movie you watched that day, somebody was in, a, in, in the shrine and said, Mike, 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 Emil Lomokwe. Hallelujah. How many of you watched that kind of a film? How many times did I call you and say, and then they do. But the Bible says there is no definition and no enchantment is in, against Jacob. So if he happens to Mike, it's not a proof that it will happen to you. Are you with me? Are you with me? So many of us who have been beguiled from the simplicity of the truth. And so one of the things that we are trying to labor to do is to bring us into the reality of the truth of God's word. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. I think this is a very profound scripture. I read from verse 2 Corinthians 10. I don't know why the media has come project for us. 2 Corinthians 10. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? So let's read from verse, verse, verse 2. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you with, with that confidence when which I speak to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not we do not walk after the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? Walk after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not what? Carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strong good. Mighty through God to the pulling down of what? First, strong good. Secondly, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of what? To the obedience of what? Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It means that every thought that you have, it must be under the subject of the principle of Christ. Bringing every thought, bringing everything into, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So the first fundamental thing that you need to notice is that there are many of us that the war that we are fighting, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the scripture is trying to define spiritual warfare. The first thing the Bible says is that the war that we are fighting is not carnal but spiritual, right? And he said one of the ways to fight the war is that you must cast down imagination. Cast down what? I can't hear you. Imaginations. You must cast down every stronghold. He said pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. So the first principal warfare that you need to fight is the warfare of imagination. It's the warfare of stronghold. It's the warfare of every thoughts that goes beyond the principle of God. That's your first warfare. And this is where many lose. Many lost in the battle of life because their imagination even can fail them. Do you know the Bible says unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can what? Ask or think or imagine. So even God answer your imagination. Even God answer what you think about. So if you don't think right, you don't get right answer. The Bible says in, in, in 2 Corinthians 5, it said, no, no man after the flesh. There are many of you that you have been known outside, inside the flesh. You have been known in the confines of the flesh. But the Bible talks about that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And all things have passed away. So the first thing you need to understand in coming to understanding your person or your identity as a believer is first that you are a new creature and all things have passed away. And in understanding this, you must first do. Do. You must first lay aside every strong good. Lay aside imagination. Lay aside every high thought. And bring them under the captivity of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 verse 18. Let's read Ephesians 1 verse 18. I'm trying to read a few scriptures to give us understanding. Ephesians 1 verse 18. If you are there. Ephesians 1 verse 18. I don't know why this is not being projected. Ephesians 1 verse 18. He said, he said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know 
what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. He said, I, pray, I let's read from 17. He said, let's read from 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. He said that your eyes of understanding be enlightened, that you may be able to know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Working of his mighty power. That your eyes of understanding may be enlightened. That your eyes of understanding, that's the first foundation of every believer, that your eyes is open. That your eyes of understanding be open. That you know the hope of your calling, the exceeding greatness of his power. That you know the exceeding greatness of his power. You see, many of us don't know what God has done for us. And so we don't know who we are. And when you understand what God has done for you, you understand who you are, and it will be easier for you to interact with the things that God, that you see around you. 1 Peter 1 verse 3. 1 Peter 1, if you are there. 1 Peter. Right, 1 Peter 1 verse 3. He said, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy had... No, no. 1 Peter 1 verse 3. Okay, I think 2 Peter 1 verse 3. All right, 2 Peter 1 verse 3. Praise God. He said, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Say, tell your neighbor, according as his divine power... I can't hear you speak to your neighbor perfectly. It's louder. According as his divine power, he has given us, he has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has given you. Tell yourself he has given me. All things that pertain to life and godliness. He's not going to give you. No. He didn't say I will give you. He didn't say, when you ask me, I will give you. He said, according as this divine power, he has given you. It means that God is saying that you don't have any, any reason to fail. I have given you all things that pertain to life and to godliness, according as his divine power. He said, through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. And I think I need to teach it. So the Bible says, according to his divine power, he has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, by his divine power, we have two things. Things that pertain what? To life and what pertain to what? Godliness. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, by his divine power, what do you have? Things that pertain to life and things that pertain to godliness. But the Bible now says that you, got, you will understand this thing or you will enjoy this thing through the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and what? Virtue. And I think I need to teach you. Listen. So according to his divine power, he has given us what pertains to life and what pertains to godliness. I remember the Bible says, as many that receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. So when you receive God, the divine power comes inside of you. Hallelujah. Are you with me? And then when the divine power comes inside of you, there are two things the divine power can do. The divine power can answer every matter of life. And it can answer every matter of what? I can't hear you. The divine power inside of you can answer every matter of life. And can enter every matter of... Are you with me? So sickness is a matter of life. The power to deal with sickness is inside of you. Are you with me? Are you with me, guys? The power to deal with sickness is inside where? I can't hear you louder. Is where? Inside of you. So if that sickness is going to leave you, to be whether you know how to use the divine power that is inside of you, that has answered the matter of life, and has answered the matter of godliness. The Bible now says that if you want to understand how to use this power, you need to understand the knowledge of him. The knowledge of who? Of him. So this is where we fail. We don't understand the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. So there is power inside of you. But with the power inside of you, you will die like a man-man. With the power inside of you, you will meet circumstances that you will be defeated. With the power inside of you, you will meet mountains and mountains will crumble you. With the power inside of you, you will face challenges and the challenge will overwhelm you. Because you don't know that the power that you have can answer the matter of life and the matter of godliness. 
So I wake up seeing challenges and I remember that the power is inside of me. And the power inside of me is capable of answering to life matter and answering to godliness matter. And then the only way I can exercise the capacity of that power is that I now begin to get the knowledge of him that has called you unto what? I can't hear you. Glory and virtue. God has called you unto glory and virtue. So the, the identity of a believer is one that is, is loaded with divine power. There is the power of God inside of you. And the power of God has two tributaries. It can answer to life. It can answer to godliness. And that power is inside of you. So you are not looking for the power anywhere. It's inside of you. And that power inside of you can answer to life matter. It can answer to godliness matter. All you need to do is to get the knowledge. To get the knowledge of him that has called you. And let me tell you something. The call that you have is not a call to shame. It's a call to glory and virtue. It's a call to beauty and splendor. It's a call to majesty. That means a man of glory is a man that is not failing in class. Are you with me? And a man of glory is a man not failing in life. So when you see that the, it looks like failure is around you, that's not your identity. That's not you. Because the Bible says he has called you unto glory and virtue. If it's God that called you, he called you where? I can't hear you. And let me, let me explain a little bit about glory for you. Let me explain what glory means. Glory is the brilliance of God. And when a man interacts with God, or when a man understands God, he can enjoy that brilliance of God. And let me explain. The Bible says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Right? So when a man arises, and his light come, the glory of God is risen upon that man. And if you see the circumstances of that man, that the glory of God is inside of his life, you will see beauty and splendor. In practical sense, you see that one million you are looking for and that you have been calling everybody for. Are you with me? Are you with me? There's somebody that woke up and saw the alert of one million. Somebody dashed the person and he didn't call. Are you with me? Are you with me? You, you will call. Another person will wake up and see that alert and somebody will say, God told me to give you. The difference is that you, you are operating outside of glory. People favor a man with glory. Are you with me? Are you with me? Glory takes you away from the realm of begging. You can't beg. You don't beg. Because you are operating on that glory. Nobody wants, nobody don't want to associate with anybody with glory. So the Bible says he has called you unto glory and virtue. According to his divine power. We can get a lot of things if we begin to walk in the glory dimension that God has called us. But we come by the knowledge of him that has called you unto glory and virtue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there are a few things I want to help you tidy up before you know, we leave. There are three fundamental things that the four did. And in understanding the identity of a new believer, you understand this. If you understand these three fundamental things that the four did, you'll be able to understand your identity as a believer. The first thing that the fall did is that he re-engineered your human nature. He engineered your nature. He took away the divine nature from you and gave you a human nature. And so if you became a born again Christian, you have collected back that divine nature. And are you with me? The divine nature, if you search the scripture, you will discover that the divine nature is not a nature that break down or fall sick or even die. So the reason why sickness came and the reason why we interact with sickness is because we are living outside of that divine nature. And just in case you come back to that divine nature and you understand it. Because the Bible says that divine nature will give you all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And we will come first through the knowledge of him that has called you unto glory and virtue. So one of your identities as a believer is that you have the nature of God. You have what? I can't hear you. You have what? The nature of God. And the nature of God is the expression of the life of God, the reality of God. The Bible says, little children, don't be afraid because greater is he that is inside of you and than he that is in the world. Because the one that you carry is God himself. You have the nature of God. And so that's the first thing that God did for us. When we became believers, we, he gave us the divine power so that we can be like him, act like him, talk like him, and our reality will look like his. So everybody is permitted to fall sick. You are not permitted to fall sick. Are you going to see the symptoms of sickness? Yes. Are you going to accept it? No. 
Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Let me give you an analogy. I was in a few, I think, I think I can't remember. I think before this last one, we went to the last one. So they did a test for me. This, this BP test. And when they did the BP test, the thing was, it was very high. So after the person did the BP test, the lady now told me that I should be taking this drug. Oh, take this drug, take this drug. I said, okay. And I wasn't denying that. No, she said she didn't tell me to take drugs. She said I should be resting. I should not be sitting down. I should be walking. I said, okay. Thank you, ma. So when I collected it, I started strewing. I strewed to the feet. And I was saying, I said, I have the life of God. My blood pressure can't be this high as a young man. So I came back again. I said, sister, can you test it? She tested it again and discovered that the thing has reduced. You condition the operations of your, of your life because you know that there is a power inside of you. Are you going to dismiss medical science? No. But you are going to channel the energy of God inside of you to re-engineer your life and re-engineer the circumstances of your life. You are too quick to receive negative reports. You are too quick to believe it because it's one, one guy that studied something. You are very quick. If they tell some of you that you have, you have migraine today, see the end of the day, all you would think about is migraine. But if they tell you that you have the life of God, before you leave church, you'll forget. <laughs> have you seen that devil, the dev devil has re-engineered your mind? If they tell you that you are blessed and you are the righteousness of God, you will forget before afternoon. But if they tell you that by chance you have HIV, you will go into depression instantly. Do you know there are people that if you tell them that you have H before you mention IV, the, the person is dead already. The, for us, the person wants to say you have high, high level of God. You know I will hear, you just hear I, you don't run. So you need to re-engineer your mind to believe God and believe his word. According to his divine power, he has given you all things. Wake up in the morning and remember all things that pertain to life and godliness, I have. I have. Do you understand? Are you with me? I have. Approach your business and remember that according as his divine power, he has given me all things that pertain to life. Meaning that every life question, you can answer it. Are you with me? Are you with me? The energy of God inside of you can answer every life question. And just in case they bring godliness question, you have the life of God enough to answer it. But the only thing God is telling you, through the knowledge of him. So go for knowledge. Go for what? I feel like reading a few scriptures, but our time is almost spent. Colossians 1 verse 24. Colossians 1 verse 24. Colossians 1 verse 24. The absence of projection is a bit, is a challenge. Colossians 1 verse 24. I read. He said, who now rejoice in suffering for your... Colossians 1 verse 24, okay? He said, who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh, my body. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which was, which had been hid from ages, from and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of his mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you I can't hear you Christ in you the what let me explain I think we end here Christ in you the hope of glory meaning that your destination as long as Christ is inside of you is where eh glory See, listen, guys. Listen. You don't look like it here, but your final bus stop is glorification. It doesn't matter what your, your village chief priest is doing. As long as you believe the word of God, where you will end at the end, your ultimate end is glorification. The ultimate destination of your life is beauty and splendor. It doesn't matter how much you have failed. The ultimate end of your life is where? I can't hear you. Do you, know, do you know the funny thing about this thing? Is that when the devil 
give me a situation or circumstance that don't look like glory. I tell him the ultimate end of my life is glory. So when things are looking like they are bad, I tell the devil the ultimate end is what? Glory. Because the Bible says he has called us unto glory and virtue. And then Christ in you, as long as Christ is in you, the hope is glorification. I know they've tagged you before now that nothing can work. And I know that in your village, things don't even work. But as long as Christ is in you, your own hope is changed. Because some people, their hope is suffering. Some people, their hope is, is affliction and pain. But your own, as long as Christ has come into your life, your hope is glory. So as believer, your identity is that of a man that God has called. And the hope of glory is inside of you. And all things that you need for life, all things that you need for godliness is inside of you. You can't be stranded. Tell your neighbor, you can't be stranded. I can't hear you loud. I preach to your neighbor, you can't be stranded. Your ultimate end is glory. No, no talk to your neighbor. You, don't, you are not saying it will fit. Your ultimate end is glory. That's your ultimate end. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. There's nothing. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing the devil can do about it. The only thing the devil can do is to manipulate your understanding. And if you don't understand this reality, then he can take advantage of you. But if you understand that your ultimate end is glorification, then there's nothing. God has designed you in such a way by your promised land is the glory of God. I see glory come out of your ashes. I see glory come out of this difficult situation that you are going through. I see the Lord bring beauty out of this, this difficult scenario that you are in. I see that mess change to a testimony. I see that your mess change to a message because God is bringing out something out of you. God is bringing out new wine out of your life. Out of your shame, God is bringing out glory. Out of your pain, God is bringing out life and testimony. You are the blessed of the Lord. You are the saint of the Lord. The Bible says the one inside of you is greater than the one in the world. Nothing can overtake you. Nothing can overthrow you. Nothing. No river is big enough to overthrow you. I see beauty out of your life. I see splendor out of your life. And I see the Lord change your story. The Bible says we all with unveiled faces, we are beholding him as in the glass. And we are being changed from one level of glory to another. We are being changed from one level of glory to another. One level of beauty to another. One level of testimony to another. That's what I see for your life. I see you move from obscurity. I see you move to limelight. I see you move from weakness. I see you move to strength. I see you move from sickness to all to perfect it. I see the Lord beautifying your life and I see his glory on your life because you are the child of the Lord. You are the city set upon a hill. Nothing can hide you. You are the light of the world. Nothing, nothing can hide you. Nothing can stop you. You are the best God created. You are the best God created. You are the best God created. You are the testimony. You are the answer prayer to your family. You are the answer prayer to your generation because the Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Nothing. Your life can't come short of glorification. Nothing. Forget it. And just in case they try, the Bible says they shall gather. But as long as the garden is not by me, it won't stand. I can't hear you. Can you stand on your feet and say it won't stand? I can't hear you better. It won't stand. I can't hear you. Talk to the devil. He can't stand. Tell the devil he can't even walk. I can't hear you. Talk to the devil in one minute. He can't walk. Because my hope is glory. He has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. There is no money you are looking for that you can't get. There is nothing you can't get. There is nothing you can't get. Lift your hands and just give him praise. Give him praise. Lift your hands and just give him praise. Thank you. Give him praise in one minute. Say, Just lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Just digest this thing, this truth in the spirit. One minute, pray in the spirit. Louder, stronger. My time is fast spent, but just one minute, everybody, let me hear your voice. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Baboi, Satafila, Shako, pray to Keselis. Devil, go, brother, go, Balayanas. This week, every mountain before you is make is becoming a plain because God has given you all things that pertain to life and glory. Father, thank you. Thank you for your precious saints. Thank you for your precious sons. Thank you for the answers that you have given to them. Thank you because their life, you are bringing beauty and splendor and glory out of their life. Thank you because you are changing their story. Thank you because you are giving them a new direction. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. 
I want to announce to you that those that know you in the flesh, they've made a mistake. And those that are defining you in the flesh, they've made a mistake. If just somebody say nothing good come from Nazarene, they, don't, they didn't know that Jesus had come out from the place. The Bible says Zebulon, Naphtali, those that dwell in the shadow of death, they have seen what? A great light. You are the light that the world is waiting for. Something special is on your head. The Bible says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Can you celebrate Jesus? Give him praise. Give him glory. Thank you, Lord.